Alright everybody, uh, we are here to uh, work on drawing a connecting rod. Uh, so um, we'll get to that in just a second. Just excuse me if I cough or sneeze. Uh, kind of feeling under the weather today, but let's get to it. Um, here's what we're going to be drawing. And so if we look at this, it's not symmetric from this end to this end, obviously. Um, we can see that there's a difference there. But looking at this end view that looks this way, right? That's this right side view right here. Uh, that is symmetric. So the front of this is symmetric to the back of it. Um, and so we will be, um, you know, trying to keep our origin centered this way, right? Right in the middle of that so that we can do some symmetric extrusions if we need to and things like that. And so we'll, we'll get to it. Um, but basically what we have are two center points. So the center of this right here is for these um, radiuses here. And then the center here is for these circles. And so I kind of think that those are the most distinguishing things, and those are 200 millimeters apart. And so that's where we're going to start this drawing. Um, and then that, this view right here is on the front plane, okay? So let's head to our fusion. I'm going to wake up my origin here. I right-click there. I'm going to create that sketch on the front, okay? And then what I want to do is I'm going to use the line tool, and I want this to be a construction line. And I'm going to start on the origin. And I'm going to take it out, and I'm going to type 200. And I'm going to lock it in just to enter, and that locks it in. That construction line is at 200 millimeters. I'm going to unclick this just so that the next lines I draw are not construction. Okay, and then I'm going to hit C for center. And I'm going to draw these circles down here. And then we're going to dimension those. So the inside one is a dimension, a di diameter of 25. The outside one is a diameter of 35. All right, so now I'm going to hit D, and this one was at 25, and this one's at 35. All right, and now down here we have two arcs, two radiuses, right? We have one at 25 and one at 30. Okay, so let's go back here, and now we're going to create some arcs, and we're going to do a center point arc. I'm going to go up here. And this is where you can type in your radius right off the bat if you want. 25 and 30. So I'll do 25, and that locks me in at 30. And then I just click here to say I want it to start above. And I click here to say I want it to end below. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same thing, except this time I want it to be 30. And again, I'm going to click up there. And take it down there. And we have a radius of 25 and 30, okay? And on theirs, it stops perfectly above the point. So let's make sure that we have those in place. So we're going to say coincident this and this and this and this. And then we're also going to do this point to that. Okay, so the coincident thing wasn't working, so now let's try the horizontal vertical. This, and this, good. And let's make sure this one worked how we wanted it to. That worked, okay. And that, and then one more here. So that they're all lined up with each other exactly how we want it. I'm going to hit escape to get out of that constraint. And I'm just going to move that one in there a little bit. I didn't like where it was. It was hard to see, I felt like. All right. Kind of confusing. I'm going to move this down below. Okay. Now let's go back and check out some of our stuff here. So that kind of gets our circles and our arcs done. And I'm going to ignore this oval for now. And I'm going to try to draw all this stuff on there. So let's just focus on this because I think this little tangent, this little fillet in here, could get a little bit confusing. So let's just, we're going to go up, over, down, and over. And then we'll add dimensions. All right. So we're going to get our line tool, and we're going to go up, totally horizontal, totally vertical. And now this one, when it comes back down, this line is in place with this line. Okay, so we want it, I'm going to hover over this point right there, and drag it back out, and then just somewhere out here, we can end it. So I went up, and over down and back all right so from there to there is 15 okay so let's dimension this 15 
from here to here is 15. And then from here to here is 7. Okay, and now um, if I hit escape, this is blue, and I don't know why. So it didn't stay where I wanted it to. So we just have to tell it that I want this in line with this, okay? So let's see if we can use a coincident here from this point and that. Because I already had that selected. So let's do that again just in case that was too fast for you. Right, so now I had this selected before, that's why it did it automatically. I'm going to make sure it's not selected, and now I'm going to hit this. I'm going to do this point and this. So those are coincident with each other, okay? A couple of things I'm noticing that I'm missing is this needs to be closed off as well. So let's get a line tool and click there and there and there and there. And that should kind of turn blue there. You can see it a little bit shaded in there. That that's a surface now, okay? So this is done. We'll need this arc, this arc, and then this long line right here. Um, and so all we really know is that this long line's out here somewhere and that it's 25 from left to right. So let's just try to see what we can do here. So let's get our line until we got it. And we're going to click. We want it to be nice and horizontal, okay? And just anywhere in here, and then I hit my green check mark and it ends that line. Okay? And we're going to dimension that from this center line. So we're going to click the center line first, then out to that, then I'm going to right click and say, I want this to be a diameter. So all the way across that center line, then I want it to be 25. So I know that that's in the right place from the center line now. These endpoints I don't know for sure yet, and we'll kind of figure that out later. And you can see I can move all those still, which is good. We'll lock those in place using some arcs. And so we have an arc here and an arc here. So let's do this one first. And that arc is tangent with this line, ends on this point, and has a radius of 30. So we're going to go back here and we're going to create an arc. And this time we're going to use the three point arc. And I know, so I'm going to start it there, end it there, and I can move it wherever I want. And what you'll see is as I'm moving it, watch this jump in place right there. It locked in place, and it locked in place where that this arc is tangent with that line. So right there, I'm going to click that, and you can see that tangent symbol automatically pop up. Okay, and if I hit escape, I can still move this however I want. So I need to set that radius. So I'm going to hit D for dimension, and that we said was 30. Enter, and now I have this 30 arc, and it turned black just the way I want it to. So now let's go back here to arc again three point arc again and this point and somewhere on this circle okay and we really don't know where yet so I'm just gonna pull it kind of anywhere for now actually I want it to be let's go back and look at this it's tangent to both this line and this circle so I want it to start tangent to this line first I think so I'm gonna click right there and you can see that it's tangent to my line here and now I'm going to get my tangent constraint and say I also want you tangent to this, okay? And then that's also a radius of 22. So then I get my dimension tool, click on that, we'll make that 22. And so now the length of this line is really determined by uh, this arc and this arc and how those kind of play together. And now the top half of this connecting rod is done. And so really what I want to do is mirror all of these lines down here. Okay, and so we're going to go over here, and we're going to use the mirror command. Okay, so for my objects, I'm going to drag it over those, and then I'm just going to keep clicking on these and selecting these other ones. So that is everything that you want to be mirrored right there. And then the mirror line is our construction line that we drew in the center. And you can see that it all kind of locks together and comes together just how we would like. Okay. So, um, excuse the announcement there. I apologize. Not get the picture taken or Okay. So if we look at this again now, the thickness of this to this and this to this, when we do our extrusion, is 25 for both of those. So let's do that first. So I'm going to hit Finish Sketch, and then I'm going to hit E for Extrude, and I want to get to my home view here. OK, 
Okay, and I'm going to do that ring there and that ring there. And I want it to be symmetric. So I'm going to start pulling it out a little bit. Okay, and the whole distance is 25. So I'm going to click here. And then I want this to be 25. Good, got those. And now we need to extrude this. And we don't really know, um, we know it's 12, right? So that's our whole thing again. So we'll do another one. But I don't have anything to extrude now, right? So I gotta go over here and let's bring that sketch back to life by just checking on that eyeball, okay? And I'm gonna hit extrude again. Next time I wanna select that surface and we want it to be symmetric again. And it's going to be 12. But you can see that's too big. Look at that right there. See how it almost comes out to that surface? And on my drawing, there's a big gap right there, this distance, this offset. So what's wrong? Well, it's trying to do 12 in each direction. So let me just click that. And then I want it to be 12. And I want to make sure it's on join so that these two parts come together. So before I hit OK, I have two bodies, one for this and one for this. But when I hit OK, now those two bodies are brought together as one, making this whole connecting rod come together. <coughs> which is just what we want. And I'm going to turn this sketch back off. I don't need that anymore. Okay, now let's do this oval inset. And if I look here, I can see that that is on both sides. And so we have a slot, really, okay? And if I'm looking at this slot from center to center is 100, okay? And the radius is 0.75. And if I double that, just in case I need to know that, right, that's 15. Right, so either 0.7 or excuse me, 7.5 or 15 for this slot. It's 100 long, and this point is dimension from this origin. All right. So we're going to create a new sketch on this surface. I'm going to right click here, create sketch. Very good. And I want to do a line similar to how we started the drawing construction, and I want it right in line with this. And right there's good. And I want to just make sure that that's there. Okay, so now let's hit escape. And I'm going to make sure that this and this, and we'll do that a little bit later, I guess, because we don't want it to move on us. Uh, but that's going to be where our slot is eventually. So let's go from here to here is 40, and then here to here is 100. Let's get our dimension tool. This to this. It's going to be 40, and then this whole construction line is going to be 100. So that's going to determine our slot right there, right? Let's hit escape. Let's make sure that this, I um, clicked on that, and I'm holding down shift to get the origin point as well. And just make sure that those are in place there. So now it turned black. That's what I want. Just make sure they'll stay in line with each other. Now we're going to go up here, and we're going to hit create slot. We're going to use center to center here to here and that tells me how big I want it and I see a problem already it's dotted so I need to toggle my construction line off there we go and it wants it in a diameter so we'll type in 15 and hit enter and there's our oval everything's black like we want we can hit finish sketch home view and we'll extrude that and it says that it needs to go in <coughs> excuse me three millimeters so E for extrude Except we want you to go in this time. So I need to type negative three and enter, and I cut that away. That's exactly what we want. And I need this on the back now. As of right now, the back is still flat. Okay? So we're going to mirror that as well. Mirror. And we want to mirror features. Good. So that's already selected. If not, make sure you get features. And I like to go down to the timeline to select that. Okay, I got the right one right there. The mirror plane, if your origin's sleeping, you go back up here and hit the eyeball. Um, and we want that uh, kind of front face right there. And you can see those lines pop up. That's what we want it to do. Hit OK. And mine's taking a second. There we go. Let's check the back. All right, we are good to go. Get back to our home view. And now we've got just a couple more features to add. Uh, we need to... Um, curve these so that's a radius of six on both sides and then add those holes so let's do this first let's go to add fillet 
this, 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 and this is going to be 6. And I hit OK. And now to add the holes, we're going to create a new sketch on this end. And if I were to hit circle, you can see it kind of finds this. But just if this doesn't pop up, just to kind of give you a reminder, we can hit P for project and say I want to use this and this. Hit OK. And then those little purple things pop up again. So I'm going to hit C for circle. And I'm going to draw that in and go back and check that. And the hole is all the way through diameter of 6. So D. And I'm going to dimension this at 6. Enter. You can hit the circle again. Throw that one in there. I'm going to tell it to be equal this time. So I want this and that equal. Finish sketch. Home. Zoom in so I can see those a little bit. E for extrude. This one. And this one we want to go all the way through. So I just hit all, cut, and now those are in there. All right. Let's go back and check. Did we miss anything? I believe those are all the features. So we've now completed this. And they use cast aluminum, which isn't a choice for us. We'll use um, maybe a cast steel or something like that. See what we can find. All right, so now we go over here. We're going to right-click on body, give it a physical material. Click on metal. I know there's no cast aluminum. I already looked for you guys. But down here in the steels, almost to the bottom of our metals, is a cast steel. So let's use that one right there. All right, and that kind of changes the appearance. We're good with that, so we don't have to change the appearance. Last thing you got to do before you turn this in, right-click. Bring up your properties, zoom in real good so you can see everything, and I'm going to look down and double check my work. That is the correct area, and yours should say steel cast. The appearance can also be steel cast, and this is what you turn in for the connecting rod.